Hey everyone, welcome to Condo Everywhere. My name is Miguel Quiles, and in today's class, uh, I wanted to do something that was a little bit different. Uh, we are living in some pretty crazy times where normally this would be a class we would do in person, but it would be something really hard to do to bring you into my studio if we were out uh, as we were in the past with Condo. So we're gonna do something really special today. I'm gonna bring you into my portrait studio that has been newly set up here in uh, Orlando, Florida. But before we get into it, I wanna take a few moments to thank Sony for having me. I'm really excited to be a part of uh, this year's condo experience. And above all else, I wanna thank each and every one of you for uh, tuning in to watch this. I know for some of you uh, who are starting out and, and maybe you aspire to have a studio of your own to be able to you know, get all your stuff out of the house, which was definitely the case for me. Um, hopefully this will be a, a really interesting look for you guys to see uh, the kind of equipment, the kind of furniture, the kind of um, things that you would need to be able to set up your own uh, portrait studio and uh, hopefully make it a successful one. So with that being said, uh, I wanna give you guys like the full tour and kind of show you everything, uh, the, the whys, the who's, the what's, everything you need to know behind my current portrait setup as it is right now and also how I hope for it to be in the future. Uh, I, I just moved into this space within the last couple of months and so uh, there's a lot of stuff that I've already set up that is great and there's a lot of stuff that is to come and so as we're walking around and I show you the place I'll let you know where those things are. So with that being said let's get started with uh, today's class. All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the studio. Um, so this is the entrance to my studio. It's a little bit echoey, so I apologize. Uh, but as you're coming into the studio, one of the things that I thought would be really useful is having a ring doorbell. Um, this serves a few different purposes. Sometimes I'm inside and I'm working on, you know, taking photos or I'm cleaning or I'm just doing something on the back end of the studio where if you're knocking on the door, I'm not gonna hear you. Uh, so having the ring doorbell is really helpful to be able to let me know that someone's here. But also it's great because there's a camera. And so when people are coming in and out, uh, you have video of the traffic. Uh, unfortunately, there are people out there that are not um, honest people. And so God forbid someone comes into the studio and starts grabbing lenses or lights or whatever. Uh, you won't have any record of that unless you have a camera. So I, at the very bare minimum, anytime I have a studio, I've got a camera at the door so that I can monitor that flow of traffic. Um, and it's no different here. So come on inside. I'll show you a couple of other things as, uh, as you kind of come in. And I'll close this behind us. So um, as people come in, obviously we're living in the time of COVID. And so I keep my mask here, but when people come in, I always just put on my mask. Uh, I've got a, a temperature gun, so I'm always temperature checking people as they come into the studio uh, just to make sure they're not, you know, potentially sick. Uh, and then I hang my keys and everything here. Um, so this is kind of like the spot where as people come in, um, you, they'll just put their stuff down. I put some of my things down here as an example. Uh, but, you know, they can just drop all their bags, whatever the case might be. I uh, have other places where if they feel more comfortable, they can bring it with them if they need it. But uh, this is kind of the entryway. So uh, let's go on to the next spot and I'll show you guys a little bit more of the studio. All right, so let's talk about this space here. Um, this is kind of like the, the sitting area. Uh, so as people come in through the door, uh, this is what they're greeted with. There's a sofa, I have my lights, I've got some plants. Um, I was mentioning at the beginning of this class that basically I just moved in recently so there's still a lot of stuff I want to do. One of the things that I want to do is to have a giant print, maybe two prints, uh, on the wall above me because I do want people as soon as they come in uh, to be greeted with my work. And so uh, this is a pretty, pretty high ceiling. I think it's 11, almost 12 foot ceilings in this space. Um, so the prints are going to have to be really big and it's going to be something that over time I'll be able to get that done. But, uh, so that's one of the things I want to get done. Uh, the seating area, this is going to be something that's a big thing. It serves a lot of purposes. Uh, oftentimes when I'm here and I'm working, um, there will be times where I'm just trying to relax. You know, maybe I get here early for a photo shoot and I just want to, 
unwind a little bit. And so uh, that's what this sofa is for, is for me to just kind of relax and get my bearings. Uh, but there's times when I'm photographing people where they'll bring a friend, a family member, uh, or I bring a team of people that are coming in to shoot video to assist. Um, if they're not being utilized or if they're just here to hang out with somebody, this is kind of where they are, where they hang out. Uh, and as you can see, it's separate from the rest of my studio, uh, which is very important. So seating area, this is a, a big thing. You want to have something that's comfortable, um, something that looks nice. Uh, pretty much every studio space that I have ever had, I try to make sure that I have some furniture there to accommodate people as they come in. So. Uh, this is kind of the seating area. Uh, it's really the first thing that a person sees as they're coming in through the door. Uh, and I want it to be inviting and, and just a nice place to crash for a little bit. So with that being said, uh, I want to take you guys to the next space, which is my workspace. So let's go check that out. All right, so moving on to the rest of my workspace here. Uh, this is my desk. It's a uh, sit and stand desk, so you can kind of like rotate this thing and it kind of uh, elevates. And I do like that for my workspaces. I have a sit stand desk at my home as well, because uh, at times, you know, you're working on retouching photos. In this case, my studio is a portrait studio, but then I also create video content like what you're seeing right now. Uh, and I create content for my YouTube channel. I also create content for Alpha Universe, which if you have not, uh, subscribe to YouTube uh, to Sony Alpha definitely do that because I have videos that are going to be coming out I have videos that are there already uh, but shameless plug there but um, I, I create that content here so after I'm done shooting my stills shooting video um, this is where like the first stop in that process so what do I have basic uh, Dell monitor it's a 4k monitor um, hard drives galore i've got like this is about 22 terabytes just between these three drives uh, i shoot with an a7r4 for my stills uh, the video camera that we're using right now is a sony fx9 and so the files are pretty pretty big and they take up a lot of space so storage is a big thing so i've got uh, storage here my desktop tower has uh, roughly 12 to 14 terabytes built into the machine as well and then i also have a network attached storage which i'll show you in a few minutes but um basically after i'm done doing a photo shoot or done doing video i sit here ingest all of the photos typically there's a few layers of backup that's happening so i'll back them up onto the internal drive that's built into the machine i use these external storage drives to basically take that same information so that I have a copy here as well as in the internal storage. And then I have a network attached storage drive that backs up what I have on uh, the desktop. So I have multiple layers. And then once I get home, I ingest everything like I'm doing it fresh off the memory card. So um, I have two different workstations, one here at the studio and then one at my home. But uh, this is the studio workstation. I have a Intuos tablet that I use. Uh, this is what I use to retouch my photos. And I've got the little uh, pen here as well. Uh, I would recommend to you guys, if you're looking to like get into portrait photography, this is definitely an accessory that you want to invest in because it will save you a lot of time with your retouching. Uh, in the beginning, if you're like me, like I'm not a good like artists when it comes to drawing and painting and things of that nature um, but i will say that taking the time to learn how to use a tablet it's going to save you hours and hours and hours in your retouch process um, so this is definitely a really cool uh, accessory that you want to invest in if you want to have uh, a career a long healthy career in, in portrait photography um, so this is kind of the workstation setup it's really basic um, to some extent and so with that being said, um, got my printer here. You know, I print my model releases, any type of contracts. Um, whenever I have clients that come in to have their pictures taken, they have a physical and a digital um, model release that they'll get. Um, all of my little cables and stuff like that, I hide in this little uh, drawer. And so this is just kind of the, the spot where I'll just do the majority of my work throughout the day when I'm not actually 
photographing somebody or I'm not shooting video. I'm sitting here and I'm, you know, plugging away and getting stuff done. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead. Let's move on. Let me show you the rest of the studio. So let's move on to the next part of my studio here. This is kind of like the shooting cube, as I like to call it. Um, this studio space is a little bit narrow, um, so I have to kind of make the most of the space that I have. So I usually set up my backgrounds here. Uh, these are just regular background stands with seamless paper. Uh, once everything gets to a certain point, what I would like to do is to actually have these hanging on the wall on a roll. And then that way I could put maybe three or four backgrounds and then just kind of uh, uh, pull the wires to be able to bring them down. Uh, right now, I don't really have the need for it, but it is something that I'm planning to do here in the future. Uh, but this is where I shoot my stills. This is where I also shoot the, what I call the talking head uh, part of my videos. So usually I'll have a background set up. I'll have something like this uh, LED light if I'm shooting video uh, to basically light me on screen. And of course, if I'm taking pictures, this would be, you know, a soft box with a studio strobe and I would basically shoot against uh, this, this background. Um, so this is kind of the work area. This is where I'll shoot stills and video. On the wall, um, I have 24 by 36 inch prints. This is older. Some of it is more recent uh, images that I photographed. I think it's really important that for any photographer, if you are uh, setting up a, a studio of, of some sort, you wanna show off your work. You know, I, I've been to a few studios where everything is just bare walls and it's just like equipment and gear and that's great, but it's also really nice to show your work. I, I could not even count the number of times that I've had people come through, whether it's this studio or my old studio in New Jersey, where they would see the work on the wall and it would be a conversation starter. They come in, they're like, wow, you know, that's really beautiful. Or, wow, I wanna get a picture that looks just like that. You know, uh, I've upsold people you know, that have come in and they want a certain type of photo and then they'll see these photos on the wall as an example and they're like, oh, I want that. And it's like, well, that's cool. We could do that. It's going to cost you a little bit more. Maybe we have to do a whole separate photo shoot depending on how elaborate the concept is. But this is really great to help me to not only kind of put people at ease that, hey, if you like these photos, you're in good hands, um, but also to create opportunities for me to hopefully sell uh, the type of images that maybe are outside of what they were coming in for. So having your own images posted is going to be a big thing. Like I was telling you, the entrance uh, above the sofa, that's another spot. You know, I, I don't want to fill up every square inch of wall with photos, but I definitely do see a lot of value in having your work posted up. So this is kind of the, the main shooting space. And so what I want to do is I want to take you to the rest of the studio and kind of show you where uh, I stash all of the equipment and all of the gear, so we'll go check that out. So this is the other half of the, uh, the studio. Um, this is kind of what I call my little gear nook. And uh, this is one part of the gear nook of my studio because I have another part that I'm going to show you here in a few minutes. But uh, this space really has the stuff that I'm going to be reaching for the most often throughout the photo shoot. So I'll start off here because there, there's both sides. I could start on any side here. Um, but here on this uh, shelf, this basically has all of my lights, uh, my light shaping tools, um, any type of grip equipment that I'm gonna reach for. Like for example, uh, when I put my soft boxes together, I need a speed ring to be able to assemble them. So I have all of my speed rings here, um, all of my lights are out so I have usually for my studio work I use Profoto uh, D1s and D2s so basically I have all these lights uh, here set up I've got Profoto B10s um, some other additional lights as well um, usually for a lot of my work I do like one and two lights for probably 60 70 percent of my work um, and you're gonna see as we're kind of going around I have a lot of lights and there's a few reasons for that um, for one, I also want to have like redundancy with these lights. So if one of them happens to go out, if there's a problem with one, which hasn't happened, but you never know, um, it's good to have a backup just in the event that something's not working properly. Um, and there are times where, you know, I might need like two or three lights on a background and maybe a kicker light and a main light 
and a fill light. And so uh, it doesn't happen as often, but it's good to have lights to be able to do whatever creative stuff it is that you want to do. So I have a bunch of lights, even though I don't always use them, but they are here. Uh, reflectors, uh, eight clamps, these things come in super clutch. Uh, usually when I go to the hardware store, I'll buy these. I've got plastic ones, metal ones, uh, different sizes. These are great for clothing. Um, if you're maybe not this size, but they have some that are a little bit smaller. And uh, if you're working with somebody who has clothing that's a little bit loose fitting, you can kind of bunch up the clothing and just clamp it in the back. Just make sure you don't show it in the photo. Um, so these are, are pretty uh, handy different lights at the very bottom of this shelf uh, basically I have all of my LED lights so that's kind of like all of the video lighting on the first shelf second shelf will be my modifiers which right now this is how it's set up but over the course of the next few months uh, this is going to get a lot better the ultimate goal is going to be that I'm going to take these modifiers put them on the speed ring and I'm actually going to mount them on the wall um, so you'll have artwork on one side of the studio on the opposite side of the studio I'm actually gonna have like my octa boxes and soft boxes they're just gonna be set up on the wall and whenever I need to use them I literally could just walk up to the wall pull it off put it on the strobe and then get down to shooting but until that time uh, they are sitting here on a shelf so all of that is there um, here in the corner this is my uh, Synology uh, network attached storage drive all of my like networking stuff is all here in the corner my phone um, I've got my I'm not gonna say her name but you know what it is there in the corner <laughs> um, so for playing music uh, setting timers one of the big things that I do during photo shoots is I, I try to be very respectful of a person's time so if I know for example we're doing a 90 minute photo shoot I will set a timer for an hour for example and so when that timer goes off it's like okay I've got 30 minutes left we need to be close to wrapping up the photo shoot and if I need to speed up I speed up if I need to slow down I slow down but I use it not just for playing music but also to give me kind of like a, a time to let me know how much time I have left um, here I have these uh, rolling carts these things are super awesome uh, this particular one I left the handle on it because I actually use this as a um, a cart where I'll have like my laptop, I'll have an external hard drive. And so if I'm here in this space taking pictures, I actually will roll this cart closer to the background and uh, have this as like a little station where people could see their photos because we'll tether, which is basically connecting your camera to a laptop. As the pictures are being taken, they actually display on the computer screen. And all of that would be sitting on top of this. Um, right now, I have it kind of up against the wall because we're not shooting, so no need for it, but it does uh, kind of serve a dual purpose. Now, inside of each of these cabinets, um, they're not labeled yet, but basically I have all of my equipment that I would use the most often. So things like uh, microphones, audio equipment, uh, gels. So if you're gonna be shooting with off-camera flash, for example, I have a shelf with a variety of different colored gels. And all of this stuff is all here, it's all handy. So if I'm shooting and it's like, oh, I got this great idea where I need a blue gel or an orange gel, I just go into the drawer and pull out the gel. But it's also kind of uh, stowed away so that it's not you know, in the way and, and attracting a bunch of attention. Um, a lot of my other video equipment, I have monitors that I use for a lot of video stuff. So uh, Atomos Ninja 5, I have a Shogun Inferno. All of the associated cables you know HDMI cables uh, things of that nature that you would need to shoot video all of that is kind of in this monitor drawer uh, again over the course of time uh, this will be kind of like cleaned up and a little bit more uh, organized but right now I have a bunch of stuff it's just kind of there um, this also is another thing that comes in really clutch uh, is having a light meter whether you're shooting studio stuff whether you're outside um, and you need to get the right exposure this is something that comes in super handy i used to leave this thing out and i had one that basically just grew legs and walked away so now what i do is i i use it get my readings and then before the shoot is done put it into the drawer stash it away 
Um, I have two of these that I picked up. Realistically, I probably could make do with one, uh, but sometimes when you go shop for things and you get a good deal, you're like, you know what, let's just, let's just get two just in case. So um, on this side, this one basically stays. Uh, so that one, like I said, sometimes is against the wall. Sometimes I'll bring it over to be able to uh, use it as like a little cart for my laptop and things like that. This one is different. Um, this also will store stuff like inside of some of these drawers. I've got, you know, camera bodies, I've got lenses. Um, so like, I'll keep some of that stuff in these drawers. But on top, this is like my battery station. This is something that, as weird as this is gonna sound, this is like a dream of mine. Because back in the day, um, I would just have all of my batteries everywhere. I'd have the chargers everywhere. Uh, sometimes I'd have a battery charging in the kitchen. I got one charging in the bathroom, one charging in the living room, and they're just everywhere. And it's really hard to see, you know, where everything is at. So I made this little battery charging station, which basically, I'll move some of this stuff. It's also my little gimbal station because when we're shooting videos, I'll say, hey, go grab a gimbal. And they're like right there, you can't miss it. But um, I've got this little tower. And this tower is cool because you could plug in stuff through USB. Uh, regular you know wall outlets and stuff it's got I believe 12 and so uh, three six nine yeah so I got 12 uh, you can plug in battery chargers double-a batteries these are the batteries for the FX9 batteries for my a7r4 which is my uh, camera that I use all the time and then uh, all of the batteries so <laughs> the first shelf basically is like a hundred pounds but this is all the batteries that you could ever want or need for uh, shooting video, for using it with lights, using it for the uh, Atomos recorders, uh, remotes, all of that good stuff. Uh, second shelf basically is all of the chargers. So for the most part, the batteries that I end up using the most, um, the battery chargers are out. So like my camera battery chargers are out, my AA battery chargers out. Um, at times, whenever I use my Atomos stuff, I'll have the charger for these old uh, Sony MPF batteries. But basically all of that stuff sits there. Uh, and again, here I have cables, wires, uh, all sorts of miscellaneous uh, things <laughs> that you know I don't use on a regular basis. So like this is a sound level meter. So if I'm ever doing a review for a product and instead of saying, hey, this product is really noisy, I could just bring out the meter and actually see how many uh, decibels it's reading. Um, filters, things of that nature, things that I'm not gonna use all the time. Like this is more of the uh, daily use cart where I need to reach something quick. This is more of just the, um, maybe I might need it, maybe not type of thing, but I wanna have it handy. So that's this cart. It's really the charging station. Um, hopefully shortly I'll be able to get this thing hung up on the wall. Uh, this is basically going to be to hang cables, uh, tethering cables, uh, charging cables, things that I'm going to need to access a little bit quickly. Um, this is going to be hanging up on the wall, hopefully with some LED lighting to just make this space uh, come alive and make it look a little bit more interesting. So moving on, um, this corner here, which you probably saw in the background, uh, I have some tabletops. And so usually I have about three or four different tabletops different colors. I have a white tabletop. I have one that's kind of like a wood uh, color, which I'll flip around here. So uh, these are what I use to be able to, uh, when I shoot my tutorial videos or if I'm doing a product video, uh, I actually have these tabletops. And so I open up a table and I just lay this on top of it to just give me like a surface to shoot off of. And uh, they just kind of sit here. Um, we have Apple boxes. This is kind of an essential piece of kit for any studio. Um, these things are so good. You can use them if you are a shorter photographer. <laughs> you can uh, set them on the ground. You can stand on them. Gives you a little bit more height. Uh, there's going to be times when you're photographing people that are a little bit shorter. And if they have like a long dress, you could actually have them stand on the Apple box and it makes them appear a little bit taller. Um, I use them as like a ladder, you know, makeshift, makeshift ladder if I need to reach something high. Um, they're a great prop for people to sit on. So Apple boxes are, are clutch. And the cool thing about the Apple box too is that the older that they get, uh, they, they look good. They actually look better. They, they start to get some character to them. 
Um, all of my backdrops are all here, and I say all of them. I'm gonna use air quotes for that. Most of my backdrops are here. Um, I have a lot of different sizes of backdrops. I have four footers, I've got some eight footers, and then some uh, nine and 10 foot backgrounds. I have some canvases. Uh, this is also something really important uh, when you're trying to start a studio photography business. You know, you could just go with like a white, a gray, and a black background, but the reality is that you're gonna need some different colors. You're gonna need some variety to be able to, um, you know, just get some different looks. So. Uh, these are all of the different um, backgrounds that I might use for my videos and for my stills. Um, I've got a V-flat here as well. V-flat from uh, V-flat World. Uh, it's nice because it collapses. So this thing opens up. It's about six feet tall. Um, you have white on one side, black on the other. You can use it as a background. You can use it as a reflector. Um, it, it, it comes in very clutch. And the fact that it tears down this way is really nice. I can put it here. It's nice away from everything. And uh, so yeah, this is kind of like the work area. And so uh, the next thing I want to do is kind of take you to the little uh, kitchen space. And so uh, we'll, we'll take you to that spot next. All right, so let me show you this space before I take you into the back room, uh, which is like the getting ready room. This is kind of like a little break area. Um, really, this is a little bit more for me than anyone because I'm here a majority of the time. Uh, so, you know, I make my coffee, if I need to reheat my food, my lunch or whatever, I've got a microwave, I've got a small little uh, dorm sized uh, refrigerator and freezer, keep sodas in there, keep fruit. Um, Pre-COVID, this used to be a great spot because people would come in, if they wanted to make coffee, they would do it. Uh, nowadays, you know, it's available for people to use, but unfortunately, because of the way things are, uh, people are not as as quick to go and get a soda or you know food or whatever from here so this is really just more for me uh, but i do think that for whatever space it is that you guys end up getting in the future if you decide to get one you should have an area like this where you can just keep you know coffee and drinks and things like that um, to where you don't have to leave the studio all the time to go and get like the bare necessities so um, this is kind of my little break area. Now I want to take you to kind of where I think is one of my favorite spots in the studio, and it's this back area. Um, the back area has the getting ready room, uh, the makeup area, and uh, also my daylight studio. So uh, let's go check that out. All right, so uh, this is kind of like a, a really fun area. This is where it's like the getting ready room. Uh, so I've got a desk back here. This is for uh, if I'm working with my makeup artist, she could put all of her stuff here, all of her equipment, uh, obviously a place for, you know, the client to sit down. We've got our uh, makeup mirror. We've got artwork on the wall. Again, this is going to be a spot where when people come in, they're going to be sitting for a few minutes. They're going to be getting prepped and ready. And I want them to kind of feel comfortable about the fact that they're working with me. So I put my artwork up on the wall so that they can kind of see some of the images that I've shot in the past to hopefully get them to, you know, get excited and, and to feel good about the fact that they're about to do a photo shoot with me and uh, to see some of the, the caliber of work that I've been able to produce in the past. Um, I've also got a futon back here, which serves a few purposes. Again, I have a seating area in the front, which I, I showed you guys, but uh, at times, you know, they'll bring friends and they're getting their makeup done and all of that good stuff. Uh, so sometimes they want those people to like sit with them and be with them while they're getting their hair and makeup done. So this is a secondary area for them to sit, you know, hang out while the person is getting ready and then ultimately go out and have their picture taken. So uh, what I ended up doing was I put like a little uh, blackout curtain to separate the space uh, because this is kind of like its own defined area. Whenever I'm not using the daylight part of my studio, I just close the curtain. Uh, but of course, you know, when I'm using it, I just leave it open so that they know how to, how to get back there. Uh, but yeah, so this is kind of the makeup slash uh, getting ready area. And so I wanna take you guys to the daylight studio. This is something that I've wanted for a while and it, it's not perfect, but I really love how it turned out. So I'll take you guys there next. All right, so this is kind of the secondary storage area slash daylight studio. 
Um, this is where I keep a lot of the stuff that I'm not going to use as often. So uh, I have props, I have uh, old modifiers that I don't use as much anymore, but that I might need one day. Uh, collapsible backgrounds, which I've made videos on. If you search online, you'll see some videos about it. Uh, I store all of my collapsibles back here. Uh, camera bags that you know usually are empty, uh, but if I have certain trips that I have to make, you know I have different bags for different situations. Um, so they're all here. Uh, extra lights that I'm not going to use as often. Uh, tripods, tools, fans, uh, just general stuff that at some point you know, throughout the course of a job, I might need it, but it's not gonna be something that I use so often. I just kind of keep it back here out of the way. Uh, most people don't see this area unless they're being photographed, so it uh, works out really great. Uh, I have a rack for clothing and a steamer. Uh, this is usually something that if I'm working with someone and we have a lot of wardrobe, we'll either put this up front in that seating or, or sitting area, or I'll put it back here in this getting ready area for them to have quick access to it. When it's not being used, I just kind of put it back here, keep it out of the way. Uh, you'll probably see some outfits here that you might have seen if you watch any of my videos. Uh, I keep different uh, changes of clothing so that if I'm gonna shoot three or four videos in a day, that I could just quickly put on a different t-shirt and then just continue shooting. It's one of the little tricks of the trade. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of like the little storage area. Uh, here, what I ended up doing was I have different canvas backgrounds. And uh, so I wanted to make a space that I could continue to like shoot stills and shoot video, uh, but utilize the daylight that was available to me. So uh, I hung up these canvas backgrounds on the wall. Uh, they do have some wrinkles, so they need to be ironed out. Uh, so before a photo shoot, that's usually what I would end up doing. But um, I have these hung up. Uh, this was kind of a makeshift setup that I did, just going to Home Depot and buying some hooks. Um, normally I would have a stand, these canvases would be on a roll, uh, but in this case, I just wanted to hang them up. Uh, we have our V-flat. So I talked to you guys a few minutes ago about the V-flat and how useful they are. Uh, so this is what it looks like when it's all set up. This serves a lot of purposes. At times, you could use it to block light. So in this case, if the daylight that's coming in is very strong, you could use the V-flat to kind of block some of that light out. Uh, you could use it to reflect light back onto your subject. So Obviously our light source is coming from here. So if it's streaming into this room and I wanna fill in this shadow side, I'll take this V-flat, move it over to this side. Um, and then of course, this is actually a roll-up garage door, which is so great uh, because, you know, obviously if you wanna not have daylight coming in, then that's cool. You could just roll this thing down and, uh, you know, just bring in your own lighting, your speed lights, whatever the case might be and you've got a cool backdrop with a, a rolling garage door. Um, it's also active, so if you see cars driving by, you know, it is what it is. Um, and then I also have uh, another canvas background here. I've got a sofa back here. Um, again, this is a spot for shooting video. It could be for shooting stills. If I'm shooting stills, basically, I just kind of push this thing out of the way. Um, but this is another background that would basically get ironed out and uh, would look really good for stills. So the other thing that I have here that's really, really cool, um, these are auto poles. And this is something that uh, is like amazing for a space like this, because if you can't already tell from what I'm telling you, this space looks different depending on what it is that I'm doing. So uh, if I'm shooting video, it's gonna be set up a certain way. If I'm shooting stills, it's gonna look a certain way. These auto poles basically allow me to set up backgrounds wherever it is that I wanna set them up. Basically just take this thing off and you can basically take this pole, put it wherever. Like let's say I wanted to use uh, the daylight that's coming in and I want to set my background right here because maybe the light's just really coming in really strong. Uh, I can basically set this thing up here, tighten this here, and then there's a hook up top. Um, so obviously I'd have to set this thing up correctly, but basically bring that thing down, put a backdrop pole, roll a piece of seamless or canvas or whatever, and there's my studio. There's my background. I have a second one here. So this is actually what I was talking about. So they've got these little hooks. And um, so I would set one up here, one here, put the crossbar, roll out the seamless. I would stand here, utilize this entire 
uh, panel of windows and doors to basically just light my subject. I have some videos that's coming out really, really soon on Alpha Universe as well as my YouTube channel, so check that out. Uh, but these auto poles are a big part of me being able to kind of accomplish the, uh, the look that I'm going for. So uh, with that being said, um, let's close this thing out. Let me, let me uh, show you guys uh, one last thing and we'll, we'll close this out. All right, so I forgot to talk about this while I was up here, but um, this cube, uh, this was something that I picked up at Ikea. Uh, serves a bunch of different purposes. Uh, this can be configured a bunch of different ways. Uh, for one, obviously it's kind of a separation of space so that you know that this is kind of the seating area slash Miguel's workstation. Um, and then obviously on the other side of this, this is where we're actually taking pictures, shooting video. Um, within the cubes themselves, uh, there are magazines. So again, if somebody is here and uh, they need to occupy themselves, there's plenty of magazines for them to look at. Um, I have gear, so usually I'll have cameras or lenses and stuff that's just out here for a display. Um, I have these little characters because I'm a gamer. I don't know if any of you guys out there are gamers, uh, but you know, big into playing video games and things like that. And I like to kind of express myself so that when people come here, they're like, oh, wow, he, Street Fighter, oh, Ryu, oh, Mario, you know, we could have these like conversations. So, um, so that's why those things are out. Obviously gear is out. Uh, some of this stuff kind of is there some days and then it's not other days because I need it. I use it, right? Um, so the other thing is here at the bottom, I've got these little black cubes that basically will store things that, uh, you know, I just want to keep out of the way. So uh, things like Lysol spray and things like that that I'm using to clean things up uh, in between shots, just kind of stash those things away. Uh, and they're all here relatively close by. So... I uh, figured I would talk about this because I kind of skipped over that when we were here in this uh, little seating area. But with that being said, uh, hopefully this gives you, gives you guys a little bit of an idea of uh, Portrait Studio and, and the things that kind of go into it and the reasons why I would have them and why I would use them. Obviously, this isn't the, the typical situation. This isn't like uh, what every portrait photographer would need. But hopefully it gives you some ideas that if you do choose to set up your own studio space that gives you some ideas for like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. I didn't think about that. Maybe I should get that. Uh, hopefully it kind of helps you out because I know when I was setting up this studio, I watched every single video that I could see of like, uh, how do professionals work? What, what do they have? What, uh, why do they have it? And so hopefully this helps you to uh, figure those things out. And so with that being said, we're going to open it up to the uh, Q&A and I would love to hear your questions.